My first visit to Bergen-Belsen will be an experience I'll never forget. I find myself there during a tour of that part of Germany. It was the first time the question of the Holocaust went beyond childish fascination. The whole of that visit to Bergen-Belsen was punctuated with the sounds of gunfire and the exploding of bombs. And this was because of a NATO war exercise taking place in the region. And I suppose it was the, 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 almost the combination of those factors that made me realize the timelessness of the anguish that is expressed in that place. That even now, there were rehearsals for war. And even now, the ground under which uh, something in the region of 50,000 Jewish men, women and children lay buried, still was shaking. When I was home some months later, and still trying to work through the emotions of that, and very easily able to recall them, I had no difficulty remembering what it felt like to be there. I could, I could hear the sound of the rain falling. I could hear the sound of the bombs and the, and the gunfire. Then, after a time to, for that to, as it were, settle in me, came the musical response. That was an enormous release for me. It was a way I had of dealing with some of my own questions and, and uh, anguish, really. Adrian called the music he composed in response to Bergen-Belsen after an ancient Jewish prayer, the Kaddish. It's actually an Aramaic doxology in liturgical terms, which is to say it's a prayer in praise of God and the sanctity of God. And when this prayer was first composed, formulated, and recited, at least 2,000 years ago, it was done in the various academies in Babylonia and in Judea. When the masters and the disciples would reach the end of a study passage or a study session. And then gradually it shifted and entered the sort of daily liturgy of the Jews and became associated not only with the end of study or for that matter the end of a particular section in the liturgy, but also with the end of life. And what makes it, I think, extra remarkable is that the Kaddish doesn't mention death at all. It speaks about the sanctity of God and the creativity of God. After the war, the Kaddish was said in memory of those who perished in the Holocaust, prayed in faith as it had been by those who were witnesses and victims of the death camps. In the concentration camps, uh, Many Jewish people found an incredibly deep role for the Kaddish in their own experiences. But there was a sense in which, even in the midst of the expectation of death, and able to see what was going on around them, and see the, the complete, if you like, removal of, of dignity from people, they were able to enter into that prayer in the knowledge that somehow God's purposes are so far beyond ours that if they couldn't make sense of what was going on, ultimately he, he would. Now what that says to me about God is, and faith in God is that there has to be a point at which, in, in the face of everything that seems on the surface to deny the existence of God, or deny that there is any goodness left in the world, there is a place where God is. I believe he was there at every moment of horror and destruction and slaughter. I believe he was with every single man, woman and child that passed through the concentration camp.
To search for God in the darkness has been the response of the Jewish faith throughout history. Would never choose 